Hello and welcome. In this video we're going to take a look at the pinboard area, which is the two areas that run down either side of your main document. These areas can be used to hold sticky notes, text snippets, images and so on. Now I'm quite an obsessive note maker um, as I write my books and I also keep my uh, pin boards organized in a very specific way. So I'm going to show you the way I use the pin boards in this video. I'm also going to show you how to customize the pin boards so that you can get your own personalized backgrounds. So let's jump straight in. Okay, so Papyrus Authors pin boards are the areas that sit down either side of your main document as you work. And these areas can be used to store sticky notes, text snippets and images. So I'm going to walk through now step by step um, how to create each of those. Okay, so a sticky note um, is basically a note that you make as you're working. It can be about anything. It can be a reminder. It can be anything you want. And so to do that, you would right click on your pin board area, go to sticky notes. You have a variety of colors to choose from. Just pick a color and then add whatever you want. Okay, these uh, sticky notes can then be arranged however you want. So you can, I, I get quite anal about this. I, I like to um, have these all arranged nice and neatly. I don't like them all over the place, but you can also drag it uh, from one, si uh, one pin board on say the right hand side to the left hand side. And you can also drag it into the document. So now you can see that that sticky note is actually anchored to this portion of the document. So that as I scroll, that sticky note will stay with the document. Whereas if I drag it to the pin board, it stays on the pin board as I move the document. So that's a sticky note. Like I say, they're, they're just general notes that, that you make as you're working. Now images um, can be dragged into a power sofa from anywhere on your computer or the internet. And it's a simple matter of just drag in and drop in. So I just grab that from uh, my other monitor and I'm just dragging and dropping. And it will allow you to drag and drop an image in and resize it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to delete that one. Now ordinarily what you will be asked first off, but because I've, I've done this a number of times, when you drag your first image in, you will be presented with a pop-up asking if you want to store this image in the document or something like that. Just click yes and the little tab that says always remember this and then you won't be presented with that again now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to drag in an image that's too large uh so this one no not that one that one was fine so this one so that image is now too big for the pin board well you can simply resize that if you go to if you right click on the image and go to picture size um dimensions you can just adjust that i'll just put two inches and apply and straight away it will resize that image so if you drag an image to your pin board that's slightly too large just resize it um, and again those images can be dragged from one pin board to the other or indeed into your document and be anchored into your donk uh, document as well and you can just drag that back out Okay, so now we're coming to the text snippets, uh, which is this thing here. Now, what is a text snippet? A text snippet is a section of text that you've dragged out of your main document. Um, so, for instance, I'm, I'll just put this one to one side for the moment. Um, say, for instance, you want to save uh, these couple of paragraphs because you like them, but you don't like them where they are. And this is just an example of how it might be used. If you highlight it and drag it to your clipboard, it completely removes that text from your main document and keeps it as a snippet on your text uh, on your pin board uh, so you can use these later. So that can sit there for as long as you like. Then let's say you decide to use that uh, text snippet um, here in this part of the uh, main document. 
Place your icon anywhere in the text and left mouse click it. So you're basically holding the text and you can drag it back in. So it's a really good way of saving text that you like, you know, let's say you like it, but you don't like it where it is. And you can do that. That will apply to one sentence, one paragraph, one scene, one chapter. So now looking back at this text snippet, I'll just move this back here again. You can see a plus sign here. Well, that's obviously because I there's quite a large portion of text in there and it's uh, coming into this small size. So if I click the plus sign beside it, you can see it's maximized it a bit more. You can also drag um, out the, the text snippet uh, to make it fit more so you can try and uh, read more of what's there. And if you double click it, so if I come up to sort of what I would call, I don't know, the margin or the header here, and I double click it, it will minimize back down. If I click the plus sign again, you can see it will open back up. Now, at the moment, the document is centered. So you can see a pinboard to either side. If I uncenter it, which is done through view, and I'll uncenter it, you can see that it's now covered where the pin, the left hand pin boards were. So what it's now done is moved those pin boards to the right hand side. So this one is the left hand pin board, which is pin board one on the left hand side. And this is the right hand side pin board. So now that the pin board is wider, if I, I could stretch this text snippet as wide as I like. Okay. And it will make it easier to read. And again, if I just double click it, it will minimize it back down. If I recenter, so that's done through view and center, you can see it's placed the left hand pin board back on the left hand side and the right hand one, well, stays where it is. So you can have as many pin boards as you like. And what I tend to do is, um, as the book grows, the number of pin boards I have grow. Um, and generally in the edit, I add a lot more. Um, so to add a new pin board, you would come to this drop down. And as I say, this applies to both sides. Uh, click it and go new pin board page. And you can name that to whatever you want. And you know which pin board you're on because it's bolder. If I go back to pin board one, you can see that, that becomes bold. So to rename a pin board, this bolded one, again, I'm going to go to the drop down and I'm going to go to rename. There we go. Okay, so at this stage, I'm going to pause the video and I'm actually going to go because this 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 is just a work in progress. It's a copy of my work in progress just for this video. I'm going to go into my actual work in progress and show you how I use the pin boards. Okay, so this is now my actual actual work in progress. This is the real thing. Um, and this is how I set up my pin boards. Um, like I say, I like to have everything nice and in line and I always keep the images to the left and my pin boards and stuff, uh, my sticky notes to the right. As we go through, I've, I always create a to-do list. And what I have this side, I have my to-do list on the right and completed list on, on the left. And as I complete something, I simply drag my to-do note over to the completed list. I'll put that back because I haven't done that yet. And that way I can, you know, it's a good way of keeping track of your to-dos. Odd bits is just things related to the book, but not writing cover costs and so on. Um, I always keep my snippets on the left. And again, this is just me being, this is, you know, I don't know why I do it like this. I just do, but I just thought I'd point it all out. So the final thing I'm going to show you how to do is to change the actual background of uh, your pinboard area. Now to do that, you go up to options and you go to preferences. And what you're looking in this area, you need to come down to user interface and pinboard area. Okay, so we're, since initially making this video, uh, Papa Sulfur has had a major upgrade, which explains all these new icons up here and down here. But they've also upgraded the pinboard area. So that now you get far more choice in the types of backgrounds you have.
But not only that, they've changed the way the, back, the background is rendered. So it now renders across uh, your entire pinboard areas. So it goes behind your document now, giving you a smoother feel. So here you can see you've got a lot of different backgrounds to choose from. Um, one I really, really like is this sort of crumpled black paper. But what you can also do is add your own custom background. So if you go to custom backgrounds, you can then browse to whichever folder your background is in and simply choose it and open. And that will apply your background. You can then choose to, if I apply it as a tile, it will then tile it behind my, um, my documents and to either side of my pin boards. Now, the reason I normally use my, um, this is obviously the cover to this book, and I use the covers often as backgrounds because I find them to be uh, really good motivational tools to keep you going, because when you're working, if you're looking at the cover of the book to either side, it really sort of pushes you to keep going, okay? Now, what I also do, and again, this is preferential, you don't have to do this, I always have one blank uh, pinboard either side, which I always name just pinboard. That way, because I don't like clutter, so then when I want to find summer, because everything's labelled nicely, I can just flick through all of my um, pinboard areas and I know where everything is. Okay, so that was the pinboard video. As I say, I'm quite an obsessive uh, note taker. I'm also a bit anal about how everything has to look. So I do normally have at least three or four pinboard areas down either side of my main document. Um, they're really flexible and great to use for making those quick notes that you need to keep as you're creating your books. So until next time, I'll catch you later.